Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Welcome to a new episode of Treasure Hunt. Um, as we are coming to an end to uh, the characteristics of the da'ya and uh, the tools that you should have in order for your da'wah to be successful. Um, you know, last time I was speaking about confidence. And I'd really like to discuss this topic um, and elaborate on it for a little bit. Um, you know, I was mentioning that uh, confidence is an extremely important tool for the da'ya and he should really have confidence and yaqeen, certitude, certainty in his own faith before he goes out and talk to people about uh, Islam. Uh, because, as I said, like once you start giving da'wah, a lot of people will be attacking you. And that's, that doesn't mean that it is like malicious attacks, uh, but it is really what people are uh, hearing uh, almost 24-7 on the media, like they are bombarded with so many messages and so many accusations and so many, uh, like, it just, it's, it's amazing the amount of uh, negativity that has been spread on the media outlets from newspapers, uh, magazines, uh, radio and TV. So uh, they're just repeating what they're hearing and a lot of time it's really uh, innocent. I mean, they are really sincere. They're just wondering, you know, why is it this? Why is it that? Why you guys are, um, you know, uh, blowing up yourselves, uh, seeking 72 uh, virgins or whatever. Um, so you hear these things pretty often. So um, a person, in order for him to give da'wah, he should really be able to uh, explain himself. At the same time, he should have this, uh, as I said, solid, concrete conviction about his own uh, faith. And um, I recall this example, a very sad example, um, um, a Muslim brother who had lots of um, sincerity and a lot of passion to uh, give da'wah and defend Islam. Um, you know, he used to debate Christians all the time and uh, he'd get into these debate, like debates and confrontations all the time. And uh, eventually this person left Islam and he actually um, turned into uh, atheism. That, I mean, uh, someone may say like, that doesn't make any sense. How can you go from extreme right to extreme left? It does make perfect sense because this person, if he was lacking anything, he was lacking Yaqeen about his own faith. This is why when he was attacked, his own faith was attacked. Eventually it just, you know, um, planted lots of seeds of doubt and suspicion in his heart. And, um, you know, f from skepticism he ended, um, or, you know, he just, just became atheist, from skepticism to atheism. Uh, and um, as I said, this is really um, something that I consider to be really um, uh, almost like a prerequisite because you would like to share that message with people. You do not want it to affect you personally. You know, the doctor um, should be healthy. You know, yes, he's out there to, to treat people, to cure people, but if, he, if he's not healthy, he will not be able to do that, you know, right? Or those people are, you know, uh, contagious and uh, he does not take the means to protect himself uh, from uh, getting hurt or catching that disease, uh, then um, he'll end up losing and he'll not be able to uh, treat others, but he actually will hurt his own self. So, that being said, um, dear brothers and sisters, um, I would really, every time that, that and, and I receive these kind of complaints um, from youth all the time, telling me that, you know, I have certain doubts about Islam and I, I feel bad for them because they are living in the West and they are surrounded by a majority of non-Muslims. Uh, and again, the majority of those non-Muslims, according to uh, statistics, uh, saying that over three quarters of the society in the US alone um, has negative image about Islam. And it is because of all the uh, negative propaganda that they have been uh, receiving, right, for so many years. So they, they come asking me like, you know, how do I know that Islam is the truth? It's so simple. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to even mention anything uh, to you that, you know, I'm not going to mention because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the, you know, a great model, a great example. Look at what he has done, look at his companions. And these things you may not be able to examine. You may not be able to examine our history because you did not witness it. And you may have your own doubts 
uh, about it, right? But I will give you something so simple. Science, for example, science is almost like a um, universal religion. Everybody uh, these days believes in that, right? Whether um, you're atheist, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, agnostic, deitist, whatever uh, might be your background. I mean, you, you cannot deny science, right? Look at science, look at modern science. Uh, I remember um, Maurice Bukai, the French uh, doctor, a scientist, he was actually assigned by the Egyptian government back in the 70s to um, analyze and research the mummy of, um, of one of the pharaohs of Egypt. And uh, he discovered that this mummy belongs to Moses, for, uh, the pharaoh of Moses, belongs to a pharaoh from Moses' time. So the pharaoh of Moses, uh, he actually uh, discovered that he drowned he drowned uh, and basically he was able to prove that uh, his body was actually later on recovered. And, and that phenomenon, because the, the discovery, he thought that he's making a, a huge discovery because at that time, even according to the old scriptures, to the Old Testament that mentioned the story of Moses, peace be upon him, and the Pharaoh, mentioned that uh, the Pharaoh drowned. and. Um, uh, never talked about recovering his body ever. Uh, but then the Qur'an mentioned that his body was preserved. So this man, um, who was actually, um, again, as I said, he had no idea or he, he didn't know the, the background of the story from the Islamic perspective and only knew about it from the uh, Judeo-Christian perspective. He thought that he's making a big discovery, like, a, like he's, he's just breaking um, ground for something that's just never been mentioned in any of the scriptures. But then the Muslim scientists who, who were working with him, they told him, we already know that. It's actually mentioned in our scriptures. And subhanAllah, uh, that portion is mentioned in Surah Yunus, the chapter of Prophet Jonah, uh, that said, فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً SubhanAllah, Allah, after he mentioned uh, the drowning, uh, of uh, the Pharaoh of Egypt, the one who uh, chased Moses and um, the Israelites out of Egypt. And then Allah drowned him um, in the Red Sea. He said, today we shall preserve your body so that you'll remain as what? As ayah. SubhanAllah, an ayah here, it means as an example. So that people would learn, people will, will you know, take admonition from your example. You were the Pharaoh who claimed to be God. You are the Pharaoh who uh, ruled the, uh, the empire uh, of Egypt. You're the most powerful man and um, everything that you had you know, now is gone and you went from being um, you know, a, a God, a self-proclaimed God that was worshipped by the Egyptians. Uh, now you're just a dead mummy. So, uh, that really inspired him to, to start researching and he, and he was really, really astonished and amazed by such a uh, fact because he was like, you know, how in the world did the Qur'an know about this? How did Prophet Muhammad find out about this, yeah, right? So that inspired him to start making uh, a research and I really advise all my brothers and sisters in Islam and in humanity, to really um, research that book. It's called um, Bible, Quran and Science. Bible, Quran and Science by Maurice Bukai. And actually this book is written back in the 70s. And it's so amazing how he put all the scientific facts together, how he compared um, every scientific fact in the Bible as an Old Testament and New Testament, meaning Torah, Gospel to the Qur'an from just a scientific perspective, nothing more or less. And uh, his conclusion at the end of his book, after he compared all the facts, that uh, a lot of the scientific facts in the Bible, Old and New Testament, they actually um, did not uh, comply or did not match mo modern science. And uh, a lot of times they, they totally um, you know, were against modern science 
and he said that every scientific fact that is mentioned in the Quran is compliant, is actually is, you know, matches and goes with modern science, science and discoveries. And, um, you know, later on after writing this book, and again, until he finished that book, he was a non-Muslim. But then later on, he chose to become a Muslim. I mean, there's just hundreds of, of verses in the Quran. I mean, the scars, this is about 300 verses in the Quran that talk about science. And we have at least tens of them are very uh, comprehensive, very clear, like crystal clear, um, you know, talking about uh, scientific facts, like for example, the flat, the, you know, how the earth was believed back then it was flat. But then Allah mentioned that the earth is round and has a sphere shape. Uh, how he actually turned the earth, um, you know, th that planet into uh, a sphere shape, like a, sh you know, shape of, uh, of an egg or a round shape, uh, basically. So, um, goes from there to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the mountains as pegs um, to strengthen the, the structure of the crust of the earth to make it stable. As um, you know, uh, the Prophet mentioned the hadith that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the, the earth, its crust was um, uh, shaky, basically, was not stable. So, what Allah uh, did, He created mountains to stabilize it. And the Quran confirms that too. Uh, in one of the verses, it says, as mountains are pegs. This is the, you know, a very comprehensive uh, scientific fact mentioned to that, the rotation of the sun and the moon, how they, uh, how they rotate in orbits. SubhanAllah, astronomy. The Quran talked about very uh, sophisticated sciences from astr astronomy to embryology to uh, geology to archaeology. And SubhanAllah, we can talk about these facts for so many episodes just just to mention, again, these are scientific facts that nobody can deny. Uh, just shows us the, the beauty of Islam, how it's just based on truth, that not just blind faith, but based on facts. It is the only faith that you can prove by facts, not by just blind faith. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.